Hi, it's Dave, and welcome to my review of my electric RX8. I thought long and hard about how to review the car. I did some video outside, did some video in my workshop. None of it really worked, none of it really looked very good. So I thought, you know what? What better way of reviewing my electric RX8 than driving it? So here I am. One question I get asked a lot, how do the gears make a difference? Well, to be honest, they make a lot of difference. This is first gear I'm in now, I'm at the traffic lights. Now first gear runs out at about 30 miles an hour, but um, it gets there quite quickly. Jesus. Yeah, so um, there you go. Not 30 is really fast, and that was with a ton of wheel spin as well. I probably just left two big black lines on the road. Um, I'll show you some donuts later because it just goes around in circles. Second gear is probably where it's at driving wise. First gear is, um, well, it's a little bit undrivable to be honest because the torque just spins the wheels up and, uh, and you go off like a rocket and then you run out of speed. So what have I built? Well, this is a standard RX-8, 231 brake horsepower. Uh, beautiful car, beautiful handling car, wankle engine, wankle engines die. So I've put in here a Nissan Leaf drivetrain. So that's motor, inverter, batteries, and charging system. I've written all the code myself. I've written all the control systems myself. Yes, there's a lot of information online. I haven't done all the R&D, but a lot of it I have. And as far as I'm aware, I'm pretty much the only person I've seen who's got the full Nissan Leaf stack working in a vehicle under their own control. The question I get asked repeatedly is how fast is it? Now, I've given a little demonstration in first gear and I'll try and give some demonstrations in second. I'm on a dual carriageway now, so speed limit is 50 around here. So in a minute we'll um we'll do some we'll do some tests. I've also got the gearbox, which is great. I don't have a clutch. Now, I'm amazed how easy it is to change gear. I'm just here, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, there you go. Um, and I can change gear whilst driving without the clutch. Now, I don't understand how that works, but I believe it's because when I change gear and I take my foot off the motor, the motor's just free spinning. So it just kind of slips into the next gear. So I'll show you this, look, second gear, I'm doing 30 miles an hour, third gear. Off we go again, straight. And I can knock it back down to second gear back up to third gear. I don't need a clutch. So because I have so much torque, I can actually pull away in third. Um, you try and pull away in third in any other car, doesn't really want to know. But um, you can put it in third, and it's a little bit sluggish off the line, but actually gives you a much kind of better mid-range. I can, if I'm like on the dual carriageway here, and it does, it does speed up to like 60 uh, uh, later on the dual carriageway. And um, third gear is where it's at then. You've got all the performance and uh, and a good range of power. Second gear, kind of right at the top of what second gear can do. And so at 60, you're kind of a bit done. Um, so oh, there you go, I've just pulled away in third. Simple, wasn't it? Didn't even realize. I've got a very steep driveway at home as well. And um, I go up the drive in third because any other gear just lights the wheels up going up the hill. Um, use the torque of the engine in third gear. I got a really steep slope in third. You see, show me any other car that can do that. That's really impressive. Weight distribution wise, that's really changed a great deal. The biggest difference is the weight at the front is further forward. It's in front of the wheels. So I've got a bit more of a heavy nose, but actually in distribution wise, um, all the things I've taken out, the exhaust, fuel tank, obviously with no fuel in it, I've put about 100 kilos in the back, but actually taken out about 80 kilos worth of stuff. Um, and in the front, similarly, I've, I've added in, obviously the new motor and inverter and the batteries at the front, but actually the motor and inverter are far lighter than all the oil radiators and the original Wankel engine, far, far lighter. Um, and with the 100 kilos of batteries, actually the weight distribution at the front is fairly similar as well. So that's great, but there is slightly heavier front nose. So the front, I, I'd expect it understeers a bit more. I haven't really driven it to that extreme yet, um, but uh, to be quite honest, 
probably not going to either. It is such a hoop to drive. I'm driving an RX-8 sports car with a ton of torque and it's electric. Brilliant. So one question I get asked a lot, what is your naught to 60 type? And I'll be honest with you, it's about nine seconds. Same as the original Nissan Leaf. And it doesn't matter what gear I use either. They all seem to just do 0 to 60 in nine seconds. Now, it's not gonna break any records, but where this is fast is off the mark, early doors. 0 to 40 is just a hoot. 10 to 40 is just even more fun. Driving this thing is just amazing around town. But if you wanna have a sprint with somebody and you're doing a quarter mile drag, you're not gonna win in this at the moment. Hopefully my upgrades will make it better, who knows? But at the moment, 0 to 60 is about nine seconds. It's not the quickest thing in the world, it's also not the slowest. Range. That's another question I get asked a lot. How far can you go? So this is the 30 kilowatt Nissan Leaf 2016 that I took apart. That car does about 100 miles. And I thought, God, if I can get half of that, I'll be done really well. The car's probably not as aerodynamic. It's got much bigger tires. Just lots of things against it. It's probably not as efficient because it's now running a gearbox as well. Um, so I've done some distance runs and I'm really impressed. I can get about 80 to 90 miles out of it, um, which I think is brilliant. The biggest difference I think from this to the Nissan Leaf is that if you drive this energetically with the gearbox the way it is, it just drains the battery. I mean, if you drive briskly, which I tend to, then uh, you're probably looking at maybe 30, 40 miles, um, which isn't great. But to be quite honest, I'm using it as a town run around. But if you just drive sensibly, then um, yeah, easily 80 miles. And I've done a couple of long distance runs that, that show that's possible. Uh, so that's really impressive. Charging wise, uh, it charges using a Type 1 charger. I just plug it into a three pin plug. You get about three kilowatts of power uh, that way. It's a 30 kilowatt battery. So you don't have to be a rocket science to realize that it takes about 10 hours to charge. And that's 10 hours if the battery is flat. But of course, you never run the battery flat. So I tend to get to about 50% and um, put it on charge. Charges for five hours and you're back to fully charged again. And it sounds fantastic from outside. It sounds good in the car, but from outside, it's obviously silent and then you put your foot down. Not only do you get the electric engine noise, which is louder in this because I guess I haven't got the insulation. It's not fitted like a Nissan Leaf would be fitted. Um, but you've got the gearbox as well, and the drivetrain, and the drive shaft, and the rear wheel drive car. So you get this kind of mechanical electro whining noise. Just sounds amazing. It really does. And of course, you catch people by surprise because they think you've stalled it. You sat here in an RX8, and they're waiting for that wank or whine, and you go, <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> So I also replaced the suspension in the car with coilovers, and that's turning out to be a bit of a mistake. I didn't realize that coilovers are generally designed for lowering the car, and I didn't want to lower it. I thought coilovers would give me the adjustment to go up or down, and that's not true. So what I've got is a car that's slammed at the front, um, so that's not very good. At the moment, it's drivable, but you hear some knocking. You might have heard that on the video. Um, when you go over certain bumps, it just knocks a little bit and that's just because it's so low at the front. Now, what I think I'm gonna do is, there's a local engineering company that's where the coilover attaches to the car, just make a new bracket. So it just two inch bracket that raises with the attachment point. And um, that should give me a couple of inches that I can then lower the coilover back to the position I want and uh, make the car a bit of a nicer ride. My biggest criticism of this car at the moment is because it's so slammed at the front, it's just a little bit rough. 
Um, it just needs a bit more play in the front. It's got no play at all, literally probably about a centimetre of movement. Um, so a bit more play at the front, make it a bit more spongy. We generally don't want a sports car, but this is rock hard at the moment. So get that changed and uh, should make the ride a lot better. So there you go, that's my RX-8 on the road working my daily run around. Um, kind of almost a bit sad really, because I just haven't got anything to tinker on so much. But there is still lots of stuff to do. Um, I've got my cooling system here. So there's the radiator, that's an oil radiator, that's going to be for a water radiator, and just flush it out. Got my pipes, I've got a pump, more stuff over there, more stuff there. Kind of got all the bits I need, to be fair. But to do that, I need to take the front bumper off the car. And if I take the front bumper off the car, I can't drive it. And it's my daily runaround, which is a shame. But I need to bite the bullet take it off the road for a couple of weeks, get that done. Because once that's done, I can do the upgrade on the inverter, which is gonna be like, what, 30% more power again? Oh, that's just gonna be an incredible car to drive. It's already really good, but that's just gonna be amazing. So, thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your messages. Thank you for your encouragement. Thank you for all the people who I'm part of message groups, forums, websites, chat groups. I've just lost touch of all the people that I've had to touch with and to get information from or I've helped and they've helped me and oh it's just I mean, so many I can't even begin to mention but thank you for everybody who's even posted on some electric car forums uh, about anything because I've probably read it. Um, a bit of a lurker sometimes but you can't reply to everything and so if it's written there I've probably read it. <laughs> so thank you very much even if you don't know that you've helped me. Um, so that's it. I'm going to sign off now. Thank you for watching uh, and I'll put some more videos out as and when I start getting these next phases done and, uh, and start to upgrade that car. Thank you.